We've all heard of pirates, but have you ever heard of a benevolent pirate, one that wants to help his community and give back to the people? We've all pictured pirates as being ruthless, cutthroat, dangerous, taking what they want, not giving anything back. Well, would you believe me if I told you of some benevolent pirates, especially in all places here in Morgan Hill, California? Sit back, relax, because I'm gonna tell you the tale of the pirates of Morgan's Cove. This is the Lady Morgan. She ran aground here several years ago in one of Morgan Hill's best kept secrets, and that is Morgan's Cove. You might be asking yourself, what is Morgan's Cove? It's a home of pirates who for the past six years have opened up their island to benefit the charitable organizations of the city of Morgan Hill. As we tour the Oasis today, we're gonna to be asking ourselves the questions, who built it and why? Well, I think that <clears throat> Morgan's Cove was the best kept secret in Morgan Hill. And that once the word got out that what we have a treasure in our own backyard and that's Morgan's Cove and Rich Ferrado and these guys that have all come together and donated their time, their talent, their energy to create something magical. That when the community comes through a local fundraising charity event, people get so excited about something like this here in our backyard. It's a way to meet people and to engage and we started doing it and it just started taking a life of its own. A nice place to relax, a nice place to chill, and, and in the summertime, I mean. I mean, this is amazing. Um, the whole, the backyard, the way it was designed, uh, I, again, it's uh, uh, not designed as it is uh, imagination creation. You know, he's got a dream, and uh, he's making it come true. I think it's fantastic, <laughs> really fantastic. Welcome to Morgan's Cove, where for the past decade, they've taken a fantasy and made it a reality in which thousands of people have come to enjoy. How does something like this get started? Well, let's find out. This is where our adventure begins. And it's Timmy Barcy after we bought the house. Timmy's, Timmy's tile works. Anyways, he was remodeling the kitchen and he used the idea of, of coming out here and creating a captain's quarters. That's how it really got started. So at break time, we came out here, uh, brought out a couple uh, five gallon buckets, sat down in here, break time. And we were looking around what we could do. Just decided, you know, why, why destroy something that's already here? And redo the pond, put a little ship, a little treasure, a little this, a little that. You go from there, like a little pirate's oasis. We used to go stock car racing on Friday nights after work. And um, as the property started to develop after the races, we'd come home and sit in our captain's quarters. We called it the captain's quarters, where the lights were set up. Oh, wow. Something would look nice over there, or we should do something over here. And. Um, 
then it would just automatically be okay. Let's do it. Fisherman Doug came over here with the idea, and he brought, he made a pirate ship. And when he made this pirate ship, we put him in the water. It just everything started around pirates, and it was kind of cool because it looked tropical. This thing. Yeah, I didn't realize it until we started in the backyard, and it was before the Pirates of the Caribbean was thought of. You know, we were doing our own, and uh, uh, it was it was fun. I've never been to Disneyland, so I, I didn't copy anything, you know, from from any other places. It was just all natural creations that we came up with along the way. Sort of a legend in the area. I don't honestly remember the first person who told me about it. But uh, Rich invited me over one time. I said, what is this thing you've got going on? Oh, you know, come on by, have a look. So uh, many people, the first time they've been there is for one of his big events, which is amazing. But uh, he just ca came by with my wife, and he said, let me show you around. Said, wow, this is just tucked into a yard in Morgan Hill. It was pretty, pretty extraordinary. That Timmy Barcy started something in Morgan Hill. We have a treasure in our own backyard, something magical. Morgan Hill was a rail stop that provided ranchers and farmers a way to transport their goods to San Jose and San Francisco. As the town grew, it became a getaway for the socialites to the cities of the north. And as the population grew, it was still able to retain its small town appeal. It then transformed from a leisure stop to a community in which one would want to raise a family. Rich Ferrato, being a proud third generation Italian, was born and raised in the Bay Area. After he got married and as his family grew, they began the search for a more idyllic community in which to settle down. At his wife's behest, they found what they were looking for here in the city of Morgan Hill. They first moved to a small house on the north edge of town. After living there for several years, they outgrew the home and began to search for a larger place in which to live. While Rich was looking at other houses, his wife Julie happened to run across a rundown neglected piece of property. What in the world would possess somebody to buy a neglected piece of property and turn it into a tropical pirate paradise? The question is, I didn't want this piece of property. My wife tricked me into signing some documents that were the deed to this property. So I was against buying this property in the first place. It was too big, overgrown, no way. I was scared. Rich said that he was against it at yes. first. Okay. What did you envision when you first, what did you see when you first bought this place? I saw that it hit everything that he wanted, garage, acreage. The only problem was it was a major fixer-upper. Um, the backyard was a, just needed to be bulldozed. What was he thinking? <laughs> well, I mean, a lot of work here, you know, but, you know, he took it from this um, yard that had a few features like the uh, pond and a few other things and took it to what it is now, which is, you know, obviously quite amazing, you know. So this is where the never-ending adventure began. Who built it and how did it get built? Couldn't have been done by one person. It had to have been done by a group of individuals that shared the same vision. The crew really originated from Timmy's network of friends. And I just capitalized on their set skills on uh, what we could do with Morgan's Cove. Collaboration of a lot of people. Uh, we all come up with ideas and we start working on things. And then uh, um, myself, I've been doing it ever since he bought the property. I've been doing some form of work one way or another, um, either A, on a weekly basis or whether it takes two, three days to come out here and do things. His brother James came over to help me work on the pond because the pond was broken. It was painted blue and it looked like an abandoned a miniature golf course. And then Fisherman Doug came in with the idea of, hey, I could make this thing into this thing, and it's got started. Many different decisions, you know, in the back of pizza boxes, napkins, we'd draw it out. Mm -hmm. I'd talk him into this and that. I'm working on lighting in uh, 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 
whenever there's a, a whenever we do a charity party or whatnot, we're we're off to uh, I'll set up lighting for that or sound stage or you know the stages or um, whatever really whatever needs to be done. I'm here to do that. Yeah, it was the, it was a party that we did for uh, uh, battered women. It was a fundraiser we did for them. Actually, I was introduced to Rich from uh, a guy named John Maccabee. The minute I met Rich, it was an automatic connection. I mean, we just, it was like we, we were raised in the same neighborhood down there. He took an interest in my talent, and I took an interest in his vision, and uh, it became a perfect marriage. I met him previously at the racetrack. All right. In uh, Watsonville. And, uh, I was surprised to see him at the house that I went to tile the floor at. And with the backyard, me and him just clicked and started nonstop for six years. My brother, my brother and I think one of his friends were the first ones to work in the pond, redoing the pond. Okay. And then from the pond, I introduced Doug, I introduced Rich to Doug, which okay. was Fisherman Doug who I met years ago at the races, because we're all race, race fans. And uh, one one day I dropped Doug off from work, and he's all, come in, let's have a beer. And I go, ah, oh, shit, all right. So I went into his house, and I looked, and he had this, like, uh, trying to remember, uh, who was that guy? Uh, Daniel Boone. He was like Daniel Boone. He had everything done in wood, and it was all hand-carved, and he had little statues and stuff. So I introduced Rich to Doug, and it took off from there. Fisherman Doug taught me how to do that trait. He, he showed me and taught me how to, to look at things, look at knickknacks, look at things, see them for what they are, and then think about where they go. Rich would pull out his wallet at a yard sale with credit cards that would just fold out. And he's got the diamonds and the jewelry and the bling, and I'm like, Rich, untuck your shirt, mess up your hair. Ask not how much, but how little it'll take, you know? So one day we were sitting in the captain's quarters, and I said, you know, Rich, what's the treasure for pirates? And he says, well, you know, it's gold, silver, jewels. I said, right, but what's the treasure of Morgan Hill? He said, I don't know, what do you think? It's easy, Poppy Jasper. What you need to do is build yourself a mine shaft. I just went crazy. It was like, wow, that would be a real tie-in if I could have the rock as treasure of Morgan's Cove. So I went out looking for the rock in the creeks, and I found one little rock. Uh, I come to find out from the mayor told me that you can't go find it, you can't go look for it because it's a protected uh, mineral for Morgan Hill, and we don't want you on private property or, you know, looking at it. So I found a lady in Morgan Hill who was selling the rock. And I went to the lady and I asked her if I could purchase some Poppy Jasper. I'm a pirate. You're a pirate. I'm the pirate of Morgan Hill and I need it as treasure. I can't pay $10. What pirate would pay $10? We're just going to take it. And she laughed at me and she laughed. If you're a pirate, show me your island. So I invited her to come to Morgan's Cove. She did like everybody else, went crazy. And I told her that if you let me go on your property, um, I would build a mine shaft. And she came back and saw that, and she saw the mine shaft that I built. She says, you can go up to my property for $50 a garbage can and take as much as you want. I made eight trips up that mountain, and I pulled out about, about I would say, two and a half tons of Poppy Jasper dirt that's in that mine shaft. That's how that happened. This is where our crew mines their treasure, Poppy Jasper, a unique gemstone found only in Morgan Hill. So far, our adventure has taken us from simple beginnings to a fairly well-developed concept, but Captain Rich and his crew were yearning for more. The island wasn't complete. Something was obviously missing, and that was a pirate ship. Interesting story on that. Uh, 
There was a pirate, it was Halloween 2011. My mother wanted me to go see this pirate ship because when Halloween was over, they were gonna take it down or throw it away. And she thought that I can go over there and get it and it would be cool for Morgan's Cove. I didn't make it. I decided not to go. I don't wanna deal with that. The next day, I went onto the computer and I punched in on YouTube, pirate ship for sale. Rich was just typing in pirate ship for sale. Two pirate ships showed up. One was the Black Pearl from okay. the movie, okay. and the other was this pirate ship. And so as we talked, I sa he said, you know what? This is perfect, but we can't afford to buy it. I was like, oh my God, look at that. And so as soon as I saw the pirate ship, I immediately emailed the guy in British Columbia and said, I'm the guy for your ship. When I did that, I called John Maccabee. Hey, look what I found. And I just started pursuing the deal on getting that boat here. And once the boat got it, started getting closer and it was really going to happen, then John came to me and says, you need to get that boat here. And how can I help you? I said, yeah, but we can afford to buy it together. And, and I got it. I got the vision. I know what this is about. It's about supporting our community with a fun venue. And that's really what, you know, brought it down here. And, and you know, the rest is history. And when the media was here and, and it looked like as the crane was lifting the pirate ship over the tops of the trees, I swear you thought you were never, never land. And Peter Pan was dropping in and Hook was about to jump off the ship. And it was magical. And that, this whole place is magical. And when people tour this place, they say, this is a magical experience. And I think everyone wants to be a part of that. My wife says she thinks the pirate ship is just an over-glorified clubhouse for boys. <laughs> but <laughs> men, men our age are usually not that yeah. immature, yeah. but we are. And yeah. so, and we still, we still live in our childhood and get excited about these kinds of things. Our community came together and pool contractors with tractors came in and dug out really a large pool and then uh, about four to five feet deep. And then we f put the ship on cradles and filled it up with rock and a lot of the ship is below ground. Well, Mike, when I first discovered Rich Ferrata was the pirate of Morgan Hill, I asked him to give me a tour. And when we finished the tour, I said, please tell me you have parties here. He said, no, this is just my hobby. I don't think people would be interested. And I said, you're wrong not to share your gift with the world. Your life is about to change. So our first party was 275 people, and we've had many more parties since then. I think Leadership Morgan Hill was the first one that we did, and that's how I really met everybody that is here currently. Welcome to Morgan's Cove. Right over here, you'll find the hors d'oeuvres and all the treats. Further down, you'll see the bar, and you can buy some tokens right over here. Around the corner is the tour to the island, something you must see, and visit the cave. Now this sparks something with the crew. They realize that they can help charities by allowing them to use the island for fundraising events. Once we started doing the charities, the people really liked coming here. And it was like, well, if we give back to the charity, give back to the community, it's a way to meet people and to engage. And we started doing it and it just started taking a life of its own. A place in Morgan Hill called Morgan's Cove. Pirate themed uh, yard where uh, they do benefits for the community, for the Chamber of Commerce, and for leadership of Morgan Hill. Um, uh, some high school uh, benefits for the basketball teams and that type of thing. Um, how do you feel about pirates running amok in Morgan Hill? I think it's fantastic. <laughs> really fantastic. Uh, yeah, the Mar Morgan's Cove is renowned in Morgan Hill. It's a, it's a place that. Uh, uh, Rich put together because he was interested in that whole theme thing, but now he sees the use of the leverage to, 
to do all the things you just talked about in terms of fundraisers for various organization. And then everybody comes together and has fun uh, doing it. And we want Morgan Hill to be a city that leads the world in healthy, passionate families. And you're, you're helping the community while you're having a good time doing it, while you're following a theme. It, it's really fantastic. I just hats off to him and and I know John Maccabee helps him a lot and help got the ship there and they kind of make that thing work. Morgan's Cove is simply designed to do uh, nonprofit fundraising events for charities of a worthy cause. And the, the goal was to see how large of a organization will find Morgan's Cove. Why don't you ask Ted if he wants to eat? Oh, well, wait, wait, can I just make him a plate and take it off? He's just really stepped up to be a, and it was after him uh, being part of the leadership of Morgan Hill that he stepped up and got really involved in the community. Go again, it's on the cave. Did you like that? He's such a giving guy and he, he, he gives the proceeds and he's just, can't say enough good things about him. There's three things that I am somewhat involved with. Um, very involved with the Chamber of Commerce, um, and Rich has done a number of things for the Chamber of Commerce there. He just had the um, Western Night at the, the Cove. I heard that it was just fabulous, and it was kind of fun to see that. I'm also involved in Rotary, as is Rich, and Rich has been most generous as fundraisers for uh, his kids' organizations, and for Sobrato Girls um, Basketball. And actually, uh, for the basketball team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my old basketball team would come and they'd all be dressed up and all kinds of costumes and it was just fun. It's just good. It's just joy. Um, they invite some friends over to do something nice that raises money for something important in our town. And I've, I've been to events that raise money for basketball teams. I've uh, been to obviously the leadership event. I've uh, been to a chamber event. It's always something that's going to make some group better, stronger. We are just very lucky in Morgan Hill to have a place like this. Having a place that people can, can identify with, that's unique to our community, that benefits everything around our community, I think just having that is a benefit. And the fact that they raise money for really good causes you know, which may be the primary thing, but to me, that's just an extra benefit. Remember always going and then Rich saying we could go in the treasure place and pick out like a bracelet or something and like, cause there's this room where you walk in and there's all these like bracelets and jewelry and stuff uh -huh. and it's always fun going in there and like finding something new. That's really okay. Walking around and like playing like playing in like all the little places, it feels like you're like walking through like a pirate town or something. Uh -huh. And that's probably my favorite part. Or playing on the ship, but I've only been on it like once. We go out to garage sales, search things online. Uh, we have little uh, adventures that we go on that um, we hook everything up to cameras and microphones in a truck and we're hot all the way down and hot all the way back and sometimes we get a little hot at each other but you know we all have a good fun time camaraderie and do stupid stuff and it, it's just it's fun and, and uh, one day you know we the tractor hit something and we pulled it up and it looked like wait a minute it kind of looked like an old anchor so before we did anything else, I immediately called Rich and said, you gotta get out here right away and, I, and, and see this. But that's typical. That's typical of what happens here in Morgan's Cove. People find things, have things, discover things that would be a perfect fit after they've toured here. Well, reality shows are really popular right now on TV. I mean, you've got everything you can imagine. People are doing reality shows. And with the strange characters that Rich has for friends, it's a reality show in itself. You don't even need to be on TV. It's a perfect fit because these guys are so odd and funny and creative. And you just keep laughing the whole time. And it's a perfect idea for a reality show because all you can do is laugh. 
really can't say whose idea it was because it was a collaboration of of three of us. It just came out, and um, it first started with one guy, and then two guys came in, and then we're like, whoa, 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 we need to add more pepper to this. It needs to be more, and we get a third guy in here, we're like, holy crap! I've got a smiling. I got a. I, you know what I got on my bending over like this? I have a sunburn. Now we've got this explosive combination. Um, there's not one. There's not just one guy. It's, it's three guys. Uh, Richard, myself, and Mike. Uh, that combination is, is 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 exciting. It's it's a lot of fun. I mean, we're we're pulling at each other's uh, pulling at each other's hair, or we're just. I mean, I can't remember the last time I cried so hard laughing. Why don't you tell me how many times you cut the blue wire? We don't cut the blue wire. You don't cut the Why? blue wire. What's with the blue wire? Well, in every the movie that you watch, every different. movie you watch, they cut the blue wire, it happens. Don't cut the blue wire. And I'm finding all these things on Craigslist with pirate related, and Trevor and I go out and start filming them. And we start buying things, and we start talking about this concept, this idea. And it starts to be fun. And it just evolved. Just like everything else at Morgan's Cove, it's just another per, per, progression of things that happen. And 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 Rich, I, and Trevor are, are the main people that go out and do this kind of thing. Uh, and we just like hanging out, and it's fun. And our friends and families um, are very cooperative in letting us go out and just kind of being ourselves and hanging out for a day or two or whatever. And then we come back and, and we will put whatever we got, wherever we want to put it. What's your next adventure? So Mr. Campbell comes over here and he starts talking to me about the Lady Morgan. And he starts telling me tales about the golden age of pirates. And I'm just fascinated and I'm listening to him. He starts talking about first Sir Francis Drake. So I, man, Mr. Campbell, I gotta ask you a question. Can I interrupt you? I said, Sir Francis Drake, did he really make this plaque? And he started to tell me the story about that. Turns out it wasn't true. So I asked Mr. Campbell, where did Sir Francis Drake land? And he says, San Luis Obispo at the Pirate's Cove. And I was intrigued. So then I asked Mr. Campbell, can I film you and you tell me this story because I want to go out and do this adventure and I'm going to take my crew and we're going to go out and relive the tales of how Sir Francis Drake found the island and hid his treasure. And that's something I want to go do. It's fun, it's exciting, and a way of life for a unique group of people. I hope you've enjoyed this brief history and tour of Morgan's Cove. If you ever find yourself in Morgan Hill, California, Start your own adventure and search for Morgan's Cove.